because man's task is to make the earth after the model of heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Man's project is to heavenize the earth. Man is made to transform the world from glory to glory, to take hold of it and break it down and remake it after the image of heaven. Welcome back to the Reformed Reset. My name is Grant, and joined with me is my beautiful wife, Erica, the weaker vessel. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Guys, on this episode, we are going to talk about paracultures. What is a paraculture? We're about to find out. All right. Before we jump into it, though, please subscribe to the channel, like the video, leave a comment, share it with all of your friends on every social media platform that you possibly can go down in the description below check out our links to social media our patreon our merch store you can email us takeholdstudios at gmail.com and all that stuff podcast world you can subscribe leave us a review all of these things guys will help us reach new listeners indeed also very quickly once we reach a thousand subscribers which we are really close to doing then we're going to do a giveaway that I mentioned on my interview with Rich Lusk on his book, The Measures of the Mission. So everyone that's left a comment on that video will be entered into a drawing and I will draw your name from a proverbial hat and you will receive a copy of pastor and author Rich Lusk's book, The Measure of the Mission. So make sure you share the you know episodes with your friends, tell them mm -hmm. to subscribe and make sure you left a comment on that video. And he's going to come back on and finish out that interview at some point here pretty quick. I think. That is correct, everyone. So, so you're going to want to be subscribed so you don't miss all of the good content coming up. Indeed. Okay, so we're talking paracultures. So yeah. what, what was it that we were talking about the other day? What is this? Okay, so I think we kind of started having a conversation that we paused because we thought this could be an interesting conversation to kind of get into in the podcast. Mm-hmm. So we'll kind of restart it and finish it out here, maybe. Um, we were talking about different churches that we have been a part of and different denominations throughout our marriage. Yeah. Uh, even just like organizations that we've been a part of or whatever. And like inevitably, uh, there always can be either hobbies or interests or... I mean, honestly, it's not always a bad thing. A lot of it's, right. it's really, it's a good thing. Um, but a paraculture is a culture that rises to the same level of the church's Christian identity and Christian culture. So I think in order to really understand right. this and break it down, like having a little bit of Latin. That's true. Probably what helps. Help. Do you want to do that real quick? Um, I'll try. You you pick up the slack if you okay. see any. I'll do my best. Neither one of us are well, proficient in Latin. So. Yeah, we were talking about this and a lot of people understand a subculture, mm -hmm. like within, um, you know, independent music, you have subcultures where there's metal and hardcore and punk. And, and so you'd say, oh, that's a subculture within the music industry, music being the broader concept. And then mm -hmm. a subculture is something that's sort of a smaller niche of that one thing. Right. Well, sub in Latin means to come under, right? Yeah. Like you could think of submission, subordinate, like... Submarine. Right. <laughs> yep. So like a subculture would be a culture underneath a culture, kind of. Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. And um, and uh, and that doesn't deny the, the broader culture, or not deny, but I don't, I don't know what thought... It doesn't it rival... Us. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily rival. It's just like within Christianity, there's reformed or there's something like that would be something within the broader, mm. the broader concept, right, you right. know, whereas paraculture, however, which I don't really know is a word. I think we might have just invented this word as we were talking. That's true. This might be us coining a word. If it's out there, then I guess that makes us smart. Because you heard it here first, folks. So para means what? Like, what does that prefix mean? That's to come alongside, right? Or to, uh, I don't know if attach would be the right word, but kind to basically of, yeah. be on equal footing, equal ground alongside another thing. So you mm -hmm. think of a parachute. Right. Right? That's because you're... It's attached to it's it. It's attached to you. Mm -hmm. um, a paramedic, mm -hmm. right? Right alongside of you, caring for your health right. and providing that thing. The Holy Spirit is called a paraclete. 
mm-hmm. right? The, the, the helper when it's alongside of you. Mm-hmm. And if you think about it in terms of the Holy Spirit, you understand uh, what the weaker vessel and I are talking about <laughs> as far as a paraculture, because the Holy Spirit being a paraclete, you wouldn't say you do anything in the Christian life without the influence and help of the Holy Spirit. Well, you it's, ought not. It's yeah. right alongside of mm-hmm. you. Um, and But then you're still there too. Mm-hmm. It's both um, you and the Holy Spirit, you know, in life. So a paraculture, it's a culture that comes alongside the normal Christian culture mm-hmm. of walking in the spirit and mm-hmm. and uh, exhibiting the fruits daily, of the spirit. Yeah, daily Christian rhythms, sort yeah. of, right? And this is a separate culture that rises to the same level. But, and this is what we were saying mm-hmm. is so dangerous, is that it's also what makes the Christian side of it stand or fall kind of Mm. thing so my membership at this church or my uh inclusion of in in this church community Mm -hmm. also means i have a crossfit membership because everybody at this church right does crossfit right and there we've been we've been a part of a church that was very much that way Mm -hmm. everyone did crossfit and the crossfit was the main like I want to say the main church culture because there was a church culture but it it was on the same level the people talked about it they all of their diet and their daily routine mm-hmm. their weekly schedules were not just uh structured around community groups and worship but mm-hmm. also what time are you working out and are you going are you doing that mm-hmm. or this or you know are you doing the crossfit open and it, it made it so that if you didn't do CrossFit, it was really hard to be a part of the church culture. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the dangerous part is that it was almost as though the success, your success in church body life. Is that a right way of saying that? I'm not sure. But how how uh, yeah. promising that walk would be is almost contingent upon how much you also do- like dove into that paraculture. And sure. this is something that I think Christians can get really... Um, stuck in the weeds over. Mm -hmm. Is that a good way of saying it? Yeah. And it can be many things. Not that CrossFit is bad. Um, No. Or any of the things that we mentioned. Right. Being like alternative health things, being super crunchy is another big one. Well, a a big concern right now is kind of the the red pill craze, Mm -hmm. right? Of what's the next conspiracy that I want to get it. I want to get in on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the real deeper truth about what's going on in -hmm. the world Mm-hmm. And that becomes the kind of a paraculture is mm-hmm. it's actually kind of Gnostic because you're like, mm-hmm. where's that secret knowledge mm-hmm. kind of thing, you know? I think another big one right now is the trad movement, like the home, yes. the home study trad movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have done podcasts about this before. Yeah. Like we are not saying that any of these things, CrossFit, being crunchy, the trad movement, that any of this is bad. Yeah. Actually, we probably are me dabbling all of them thus far a little bit right right but it's when it rivals and it comes almost on the same level as just like christian life christian walk christian church culture yeah, that good. it gets to be dangerous well because what happens what we've seen is it it come, becomes a part of identity mm-hmm. and that ought to make everybody pause and they whoa, 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 whoa hold on hold on mm-hmm. hold on And this is what it really is. If we're going to go all the way back and use uh, New Testament terminology, it's a form of Judaizing, Mm -hmm. right? It's a form of staying with the um, Stoichaic. It's the, I just had to pass a big exam. So I have all these Mm. words in my mind. Get them out. It's the the elements, (laughs) the elements of the flesh, um, elements of the world Mm. that Paul talks about in Galatians. He said, you guys have moved on past this stuff, but... The Judaizers were doing mm-hmm. what? They were trying to maintain the food laws, um, mm-hmm. circumcision, and that was part of their identity and their inclusion in the community. Mm-hmm. So um, when when things like homesteading or being uh, self-sufficient, right? That's mm-hmm. another one of those big terms is mm-hmm. I just want to be self-sufficient in these things. Okay, well, there are other people who are just as godly. Right. Who are not who, trying to do what you're doing. Who have zero chickens. You know, and this is... That's right. <laughs> what? And they're still godly? <laughs> Forbid it. Um, but uh, this is... Um, 
I lost my thought. Well, this is where come back it becomes very important that we start understanding a little bit of Latin. The para mm-hmm. versus the sub, right. right? Because you can do all of those the, all of those activities, all of those things in a way that is subordinate yeah. unto Christian culture, what God actually does demand of you. Right. And it can be done to the glory of God. Right. Or if you take those things and you don't subordinate them and mm-hmm. you bring them alongside of, right, then it become, becomes idolatry. Yeah. It becomes pagan and it's not glorified. It's not well, honoring to the Lord. And if if your Christian identity is not just rooted mm. in Christ and the right and what he has provided for you and the deliverance that um, that he has done on your behalf through his life, death, burial, mm-hmm. resurrection, ascension, and session at on his throne. Mm. If anything else you've added to that, you are thinking in old covenant ways, mm-hmm. right? You are thinking in, I need to add these things for um, for me to be able to draw near to God. Mm-hmm. Stop it, mm-hmm. right? That is not new covenant thinking. That's not um, you know that's not the life of the spirit. What I was going to say is the additional danger um, is that these movements latch on to certain teachings of scripture. And and it's like this thing of everything I need to do needs to have like a, I need to have chapter verse. I know this may sound bad and need to have chapter verse to justify this desire of mine Mm -hmm. to homestead Mm -hmm. or whatever it is. But if you do that too far in one direction then you can become legalistic. Mm -hmm. Not doing it is not following those scriptures that Mm -hmm. you, and it's like, well, hold on. That's right. And that's what, that's really how cults are formed too. Honestly, that's true. (laughs) Like if you ever wonder how like the Oneida cult in upstate New York started making silverware, they had a verse. It's true. Like it, you get into these weird things and I'm not saying that if you, you know, If you feel very passionately about something that's wrong, I think that's fine. You can feel very passionately about silverware Mm -hmm. and you can be godly. Like That's fine. You just got to really watch yourself. And the thing is, is like your whole world will quickly um, start crumbling in on itself because it turns out God, God is a very jealous God and he will start taking like idolatrous things away from you. Mm -hmm. So it's dangerous to start doing this sort of thing too. Right. Um, it's really like a caution, like don't do this. Don't get all caught up in the weeds over stupid things yeah. because it's not a safe place to be before the Lord. No, it invites pruning, doesn't it? It sure does. You know, I really appreciate when I've known somebody for a while and it's only months or even years after knowing them that I find out they they do some kind of quirky thing. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, you know what? I really appreciate that they didn't try to convert me to it or mm-hmm. they didn't try to you know throw it in my face and tell me I'm I'm being a bad Christian because and sometimes I think this can be like a young man's uh error right mm-hmm. like there is some zeal in youth that's true there's a whole lot of young men who are super into homesteading there aren't many 80 year olds who are like I think I should get <laughs> you know 50 acres and some pigs it's really funny that's a really good point there's just something too I think gaining some wisdom as you get older and, and kind of understanding like this matters a whole ton and then this doesn't matter a whole yeah. ton. Um, I think also churches can unintentionally do this mm-hmm. because sometimes, especially when you're starting out in a new church, um, this was the CrossFit church that we were talking yeah. about back in North Carolina days. Mm-hmm. Um it started in a CrossFit gym. Right. And so naturally it just sort of attracted the, yeah, it just kind of, the church sort of formed up out of that. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't necessarily, they were trying to make this paraculture. It just kind of happened organically Yeah, and they weren't watchful. Yeah. It would have been good for the leadership to take notice Mm -hmm. and then do whatever it could to Mm -hmm. mitigate Mm -hmm. um, that sort of thing. Yeah, that'd be good. Because, well, the other thing too is when, if it's a good thing, like we said, like if it's a subculture, right, uh, Facebook has groups for literally all of these things, like reformed homesteaders, reformed, you know, whatever, there's probably reformed chicken owners or something. I don't know. Probably. Um, Leadership want to encourage it. I mean, it's a good thing. Sure. God bless you. That's cool. Uh, you know, and pass, give me some of your eggs. 
That's right. Give me <laughs> Canada, you got any extra eggs? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you, you're interested in people's lives. And so you ask about it and that can be encouraging. And like you said, maybe unintentionally. Uh, it's happened very naturally. Yeah. Yeah. It just sort of grows out of You it. hear so-and-so doing that and it inspires you to try it too, right? That's true. And then someone else hears and I go out and, and it usually in good godly Christian circles, mm-hmm. you don't get a paraculture on purpose. Okay. Right. Yeah. Generally speaking, I don't think many churches or many Christians are, are looking s- to start. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah, right. yeah. And that's the cautionary tale. Um, it can happen, right? Right. Right in front of you. And yeah. this this is also true in parenting, I think. Like when you talk about uh, a paraculture, you can have a paraculture in your home. Okay. Right? Are yeah. you like the soccer family? Yeah. Are you Music the... Music family. Pick anything, the right? animal family. The what? Yeah. And again, the danger is not doing those things. Uh, I think obviously talent and natural ability is going to lead families and children to things like that. Mm-hmm. But it'll be the 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 identity part of it where yeah. that becomes this is how a Christian family does things is right. like us. If you're in our family, then you will mm-hmm. do this. And, and maybe even as your kids get older, this will become more apparent as your children start to have different ideas or different hobbies or, or different interests, right? Yeah. Suddenly your 17-year-old doesn't really care so much about, I don't know, Monday night football. He would much rather go to, I don't know, his friend's house and right. jam on the guitar. I don't know, whatever, like pick something like that. Skateboard? Sure. And like, but that can feel like a jab. Like, what do you mean? We yeah. are this family. You're this turning what we do. away from the family's identity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and most people probably wouldn't admit it in such, yeah. you know, open terms, but be careful. Yeah. Because that's how it'll manifest itself. Mm-hmm. Or this is where our family goes to college. Or this is, you just you start making these weird cultural things that don't need to be right and it becomes burdens it yeah. becomes alienating it becomes a problem yeah and what needs to happen is a christian culture um uh, it needs to be emphasized and laid down as the foundation and as the one that decides all the other subcultures mm. you know that it needs to be the um the, the GPS for it all. Christians need to be very open-handed with those sorts of things, right? Right. That's what we need to learn. And and when you do feel very passionately about things like whether or not you, uh, I'm trying to think of a word to use that's safe, um, <laughs> inoculate your children. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, yeah. You can feel very passionately and be very educated, and yet you still have to be charitable with someone else. Unless it's a matter of sin, right? Like, well, and that's what the Christian culture would provide for you. Yes, is this sin or not? Yeah, yeah, and that's where we have to really be honest and say, where is sin and where is preference? Right. Um, whether you like soccer or football, that's a preference. It is not a sin issue. Yeah. Whether you paint your walls, you know, beige, or whether you paint them a bright blue, those are all preferences and you just have to be very charitable whether you live in the middle of the city or you live in the middle of the country and you feel yes. very passionately one way or the other right um you you as a christian need to be charitable and you cannot make that Paint an issue with a broad brush maybe right <laughs> you may not make those issues that are that become equivalent to yeah. godliness like you said yeah that's good it might be godly for you to do something but that doesn't mean right yeah. Like if you if you if God has given you much, then perhaps he is telling you to do something with the much he's given you, whatever that means. Mm-hmm. But maybe he's not given the other people that same thing. And so they don't need to steward it the same way you are. And you don't get to look down on them for it. You know, another helpful um, concept is that the body of Christ is is made up of many members. Mm. Right. So you can't say, no, if you're a Christian, you must be a hand. And I think we've fallen into this trap all throughout church history, mm. right? If you're a really holy Christian, then you're a martyr. Yep. If you're a really holy Christian, then you are a monk. Mm-hmm. Or then it was leadership in the church, the priest, you mm-hmm. know, you're a priest or you're a whatever. 
And then, you know, more recently in big evangelical world is you're, you go on missions trips, mm-hmm. right? You're the real, you know, David mm-hmm. Platt radical, mm-hmm. you know, you don't care about stuff, John mm-hmm. Piper and, you know, the wartime. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't care about stuff. You just care about the, the glory of God as if we can't glorify God with our stuff. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but it's really but, easy to do, actually. <laughs> watch me go <laughs> um but uh so th- beware of that 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 tendency it's mm-hmm. it's been here all throughout um church history uh pride wants to show off mm. so it's gonna look for ways even in a christian circle to say well look at look what we do look how disciplined i am i do all these things yep right that's right or look how disciplined I am. I do none of these things. <laughs> That's right. Look how not obsessed with my, I, myself I am. Right. My, I'm very out of shape and very. Right. <laughs> yeah. Either direction. That's right. true. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, beware of paracultures. And you've heard it here first, folks. And the thing is, like, the standard, there is a standard. Sometimes I feel like Christians like to talk in, like, you know, yeah. vague abstractions sort of if there's neutrality yeah but there's not so it's actually really easy if we are being honest if we're looking at a situation and we're using wisdom Mm -hmm. to say you are acting in a godly manner by getting up every day at 5 a.m doing crossfit uh not jabbing your kids Mm -hmm. baking everything from scratch and you're on your 50 acre homestead right that could be really godly But if you're the person who's doing all of that for very selfish, prideful reasons, you're putting your family into debt, you are, you know, shrugging responsibilities left and right. Like there could be, it could be disastrous. Or it just makes you prideful. Right. You just think deep down you're you're doing better. Right. And it's easy to know the difference. Generally speaking, if we were looking at, you know, the situation, we would be able to determine pretty quickly whether you're doing it for righteous reasons and it's honoring God or not. I don't yeah. think it's that hard to tell. Yeah. If you're honest with yourself, then you say, okay, if all this went away, if every aspect of my life, you know, these things mm-hmm. flipped and switched, I'm living in the heart of New York City. Mm-hmm. I don't have a, you know, CrossFit, map, all that stuff. Does that bother me? Mm-hmm. Does that make me think I'm not even living a holy life? Mm-hmm. You may need to mm-hmm. do some inventory. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah. Right. <clears throat> These are just our personal experiences. There are a plethora of ways yeah, and, and things that could be right paracultures. And just to, I had a thought back when you were saying, um, or when we were saying there's no neutrality. Mm. Like people want to say like, oh, it's just this nebulous thing. Mm-hmm. You can, the absence of neutrality doesn't mean that there is just a way to, like there are a whole host of godly culturative acts I mean, we've mentioned them, whether mm-hmm. it's making bread or farming or it's music or it's um, politics. Uh, yeah. Poli- yeah. Um, ruling in the civil mm-hmm. sphere. There's all these different things. No one can do all of them. Right. Right. And so you look and go, OK, well, I guess they're made for that. And mm-hmm. I'm made for this. And mm-hmm. again, it goes back to the body of Christ thing. Mm-hmm. Um, so anyway. Right. Yeah. Right. It's just important. It's just something to like be watchful of, something that we've noticed. There's this tendency. Yeah. Um, what paracultures do you, can you think of? You right. should comment below and let us know what paracultures you might have experienced or been in or have seen before. I'd be interested. Yeah. In, yeah. in church world. Right. We've been in so many different churches uh, that it's it's funny to yeah. kind of see like in reformed world these are like it's more yeah. of the homesteading more of the trad thing when yeah. we were in the x29 side of things that was the crossfit mm-hmm. that was the mommy blog that was like it's mm-hmm. just like funny to know like sort of they have their own tendencies yeah everyone, they all have their own weaknesses everyone kind of has their own bend and i mm-hmm. think that is part of the culture mm-hmm. of those people yeah certainly even regionally there are certain cultural things to reiterate subculture is something that you can like take it or leave it right you can enjoy it you can enjoy it and whether it's there or not it doesn't really make a a massive difference Mm -hmm. whereas a paraculture it's almost like they have to exist side by side 
in that identity. This might be something like a silly example, but in our church, Mm -hmm. we do Sabbath dinners after church on Sunday. We have a lot of food, drinks, we hang out. And oftentimes... And a lot of fun, too. Oftentimes, we will play cards, right? Mm -hmm. We, not like in a in an unrighteous way but we play like all kinds of like card games Mm -hmm. we have fun like jabbing at each other and just sort of like hanging out and um that's a thing we do but if someone came in and was like oh i hate playing cards Mm -hmm. we would not be like well then i guess you're never going to fit into this church guess you're not one of us like that would be stupid right you know what i mean yeah that might be a, a very simple like you know, dumbed down explanation of what we're trying to say, but it would be wicked of us to make that part of our culture. This is how we do things. Mm -hmm. If you want to be one of us. Yeah. Well, I think that's a good example of going back to Galatians and the Judaizers. You're not circumcised. You won't keep yourself, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, eating what you should. Mm -hmm. Can't sit with us. Mm -hmm. Then you're not, Mm -hmm. you're not one of us. Mm -hmm. You're not as holy. Right. So get with the program. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, hopefully that is helpful and gets you thinking. It got us thinking for a good bit. So. Yeah, we were on the way to the airport and I we just yeah. started talking through this and we we're like, that is a really interesting. We we just thought it was a good clarification and a good mm-hmm. thing to just, you know, warn people of. Yeah. Well, and on social media, you see the same thing over and over again enough and you're like, this looks like... A culture, a subculture Mm -hmm. has risen to the level Mm -hmm. of paraculture. You know, I I think I've commented about the masculinity stuff, too, Mm -hmm. where if you're not, you know, lifting weights like this or exercising like this or Mm -hmm. killing animals, uh, you know, every other week. And also this, you know what I mean? You like Mm -hmm. start listing all stuff. This is masculinity. And it's like. Yeah, I, I, that could be perfectly fine and good for you to be doing those things. Um, but I'm not exactly sure that's but the, the things, definition of masculinity. It's not, because the thing that you actually are called to do is to protect, provide. Are you doing that? How you yeah. do that can look very different. Once again, culture to culture. But like the thing you may not, uh, you know, uh, shirk off is mm-hmm. the responsibility to you know, provide for your family, whether you are killing the animals yourself, whether you are working hard to provide your wife the ability to go to the grocery store. Yeah, because you may think it's super masculine um, to go on a to go on a hunt. uh, But if that means you left your family behind for a week or two weeks and you do that several times a year Mm -hmm. and you're just neglecting your wife is drowning in the meantime. Right. um, Then it's not manly. Yep. It's just not manly. Right. But, you know, it could uh, be could be really manly, could not be. That's right. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The qualifications for a minister. Turns out none of them have to do with how much you bench press or how quickly you can field dress a deer. That's right. It has everything. Masculinity has a lot more to do with character, inner character. And then that scene in just your conduct, Mm -hmm. not in your activities. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway. I hope you found that helpful and, um, you know, share it with a friend if uh, you think they would enjoy the content. But anyway, let us know uh, in the comments below, guys, if you know of some paracultures that we didn't mention that um, you've experienced or gone through. I'd be really curious. So, Or if we were unclear, we tried to be as clear as to not offend someone or try and make it sound like we're dunking on any of those perfectly fine and lovely things. No. um, (laughs) But you know what? Things that are things that are legalisms like this, um, usually there are some there's hate mail associated with when you poke legalisms. Yeah. You know, so um, so if your conscience is pricked a little bit, it's kind of funny because I feel like maybe. whenever we talk about women's issues like yeah. making bread or homeschooling your kids, there's always the people who are like, you did not promote it hard enough. And then right. the people who are like. You think if I don't make bread that I'm not a Christian. Mm -hmm. It's like polar opposites. And it's like, that isn't what I said at all. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Here's the forest you are looking. Yeah. Right. You've missed it. Right. It's like, if you don't want to hear what we're saying, then that's probably pretty easy to do. If you do want to hear what we're saying, that's probably easy too. All right then, guys. 
Well, thanks clear for... Clear as mud. <laughs> clear. I love, love that phrase. Clear. Uh, thanks for stopping by the channel. And again, I hope you <laughs> enjoyed that. And um, yeah, stay tuned until next time. Take mm-hmm. hold and reorder creation by first reforming your home. This has been the Reformed Reset. But on the basis of grace and on the finished work of Jesus Christ, the project is back and forth. And the destiny of a new transformed world is assured. I just put the sourdough in the oven too, so I've got like 40 minutes.